Yo, what's up people? Today I want to talk about the Kershaw Strata Large. And I have to apologize to you guys because I've been wanting to do this video in the summer and now it's like December. Um, why did it take me so long? I don't know. Life is sometimes difficult and goes by fast. And also I had some issues with the Kershaw Strata here. And I'm gonna talk about all the issues that I had with this knife in this video. But first, I wanna say a couple of things that I really like about this knife, which is basically just the design of this knife and that's it. And then I'm gonna talk about the problems and I also, after that, I'm gonna show you a lot of footage of me using the knife so you can see how the knife performs in actual real life. And um, at the end of the video, I'm gonna compare it to other knives in a similar price range or in different price ranges to see if this knife is worth buying it. Now, um, what did I really like about the Kershaw Strata? Well, pretty easy, probably the same thing that you are liking about the Kershaw Strata, which is the design, the Spanish influenced, Spanish Navaja influenced clip point, very long blade. We have 11 centimeters of blade length, which is five, 4.5 inches, excuse me. Um, so super cool size range we are looking at here. There are not a lot of knives that come in with a blade length like this. And I wish they would because pocket knives, at least I wish they would because, um, it's a pretty cool size. You have a ton of cutting edge and a long and slicey blade is always a good thing to have. And I like myself the larger blades. I have to admit, now, usually when a knife is really big, it also is really heavy. This one is only 105 grams, which is 3.7 ounces for the size range we are looking at. And considering that we have a full um, stainless steel frame lock, it's actually pretty lightweight. So I do like those things very, very much. And I think it just looks cool. It looks beautiful. Some of the features here are, of course, a little bit more modern. In general, the knife is is uh, made to be to be liked by a modern audience. Um, there is not a lot of classic uh, traditional knife in this design anymore, and I do get that. I think it's all right um, that not everything is that is traditional inspired. Also, looks very traditionally. So we have a ball bearing. I think it's ceramic bearings. Um, flipper, the flipper tab actually hides inside the handle, super cool. The detent is nice, um, sort of a medium detent. It's not super hard, not super soft either, somewhere in between. But it's more on the softer side, I would say in general. Uh, doesn't take a lot of effort to open the blade, yet the blade is in the handle very good, you have to really try to shake it out. It's not gonna come loose in your pocket. Uh, the detent is strong enough. Now, I'll say more things about the detent a little bit later on. Um, a lot of angles in the G10, milled into the G10 here. The coarseness of the G10 is very lightly only. Um, on this area here, it's completely smoothed out and then like I said, a lot of these angles, a lot of futuristic design features. We have this inlay here. I don't think this inlay is copper because it hasn't patinaed yet on me. And yeah, if it was copper, it should have patinaed by now. So um, I, I guess it's just anodized. Um, on the other side as well, it also works on a, as an over travel stop on the other side. And yeah, like I said, stainless steel frame lock, so we don't need an insert. Uh, sandblasted D2 steel blade. Now the sandblasting will attract a little bit of surface rust. I had that during the summer, but only very lightly. And now that it is winter, I don't see that anymore. Um, yeah, the clip point blade is not very traditionally traditional. It's more it's very modern actually. I have some issues with the focus. I apologize to you guys. Um, so it's a very subtle clip. If you know what Spanish clips look like, 
They are a lot more dramatic. This one is more, you know, saddle. Uh, long cutting edge, little bit of belly here, nice control over the tip so you can be very precise even the blade is very long. Um, we have a swedge, sort of a swedge up here, I don't really like that, I think it's kind of stupid because it's not really a swedge, it's just done more than two thirds of the way and then they stopped. For whatever reason they didn't make it a real swedge, so there's no actual purpose to this thing right here. I guess they have so many angles. In the blade, they also wanted to have an angle in the uh, in the uh, so many angles in the handle. They also wanted to have an angle in the blade, and I don't really see the function of this one. I think it's useless. Flat ground blade, relatively thick behind the edge, which is not the greatest thing. We're looking at uh, 0 0.48 millimeters behind the edge, 18 thousands. Well, some of you may say, "Hey, that's not too bad for a production knife from China," but. Um, the blade stock thickness is only like 2.6 millimeters, it's not even 3 millimeters, so very thin blade stock and very thick for the behind the edge for that blade stock. So you always have to look at the blade stock thickness and considering that it's relatively thick behind the edge. So it's it's not the best slicer, it could be a little bit more slicey but it does perform alright. Um, show you. I will show you in my in use footage later. Um, yeah, show you the other side of the blade. Here you can see the logo. So it's an a Kai in-house design. Like I said, D2 steel. How is the steel? Well, I would say the 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 heat treatment on this guy is mediocre. Not the best D2 that I've seen for sure. Um, didn't really sharpen up well. Had a lot of issues with resharpening this knife. The uh, the edge was very bad out of box. On my first Strata that I bought, the edge was even extremely burnt in the tip area. Now, why did I have a second Strata now? Why do I have a second Strata now? Is it is because the first one that I bought had horribly detent issues. And you may say, hey, you just pressed on the lock bar on the other side. That's why it didn't open. But no, actually it didn't. So. The knife just had a detent that was so hard that I couldn't open it and I sent it back to the dealer. He couldn't open it as well so he gave me a new one which was super nice of him. So this is my second one. Both the first one and the second one had not the best edges and this one, I only resharpened the second one. The first one I didn't have long enough and it was very difficult to resharpen that D2 steel. Now that it is sharp it actually cuts things but before it didn't really cut things. So out of box, very bad edge performance. And like I said, I don't think this is the best D2 steel. It doesn't doesn't hold an edge great. Um, yeah, maybe maybe I didn't do the best job on the resharpening either. But I have resharpened a lot more difficult steels in the past, so I think it's not uh, my fault actually. Now. Um, the blade is perfectly centered, the lockup used to be quite early, now that I have it for a couple of months, the lockup is at like 70 to 80 percent, it's, it's a very insecure lockup. Um, I'll show you, just get this thing here so I don't scratch up my table. I noticed that during use that this lock is not really secure. And let me do it again. So, yeah, you may, whatever you think of spine wax, they're probably not the most realistic test because in real life you have your hand on the lock bar while you're cutting, and so the, the knife is safe. But maybe, I don't know, maybe you use your knife like this, stab it into something, and then the lock fails on you. Whatever the reason may be, not that you don't have your hands on the lock bar here as well, but I don't think you you're engaging, you know, you're not pressing as hard as in this position. So I think this uh, is a very insecure lock. And the reason for that might be um, there is a lot of room between the lock bar and the actual tang of the blade because the tolerances are not so tight with these. So yeah, not the, not the highest quality on the lock bar here. A lock bar that's that thick and engaged at like 70 to 80% should hold up a little bit better in my opinion. 
Um, deep carry pocket clip. I think the deep carry clip works fine with the large one right here. I didn't bought the extra large Strata because the extra large, the extra large Strata has a blade length of 13.7 centimeters, 5.4 inches. So this one is four and a half inches in the blade length and the uh, extra large is 5, 5.4. And overall length on the extra large is uh, 12 inches. So 30.5 centimeters. So this is almost like my Cold Steel Voyager XL in terms of the overall length. And the Cold Steel, Cold Steel Voyager XL is a really good knife already. And that's why I didn't bought the Strata Extra Large because the Voyager has grown thinner, probably has a better heat treatment and also has a stronger locking system and doesn't have deep carry clip and with knives that are this big you may not want a deep carry clip because it's a little bit more difficult to carry them then but on the large one the deep carry clip actually works fine um, unless you don't like deep carry clips which is also you know fine uh, I don't like deep carry clips all the time either so it depends on the knife on this one I think it, it works relatively good uh, if I would like to carry this appendix it would be a little bit uh, of a pain because uh, deep carry clips and appendix doesn't really work. But if you carry them normally, no problem at all. So yeah, um, a cool idea from Kershaw, like a really cool idea um, to bring back something from the past and making it, make, it, make it a little bit more modern, more appealing to a modern audience. Like I said, some design features I don't really understand, like this fake swedge on the top, it's pretty useless, and also the thick grind. You know, this knife should have a hollow grind or at least be ground a little bit thinner if they already give us such a thin blade stock thickness uh, which is a good thing in general but you know if you mix that with a thick grind it won't perform to its full potential so yeah these stand I also don't really like visually but that's just me personally some people may like them um, I think the color I know what they're trying to do they try to match the color but I don't really like this this rose gold and the shape of these standoffs is really ugly as well. Other than that, I really like this the whole idea, the whole concept of this knife, but it kind of feels a lot more cheaper than it actually is. This knife right now comes in at about 100 euros, and it feels more like a, a knife that should cost 40 to 50 euros maximum. And yeah, also performance-wise, the performance is just not there. You get so many more better knives for this price. I mean, look at what CBB does. 
they're not that inexpensive anymore. A lot of their knives cost 70, 80, 100 euros now. But this governor, for instance, for instance, cost uh, I think 55 euros in the past. I'm not sure what it costs now, but they give you thin hollow grinds. The D2 steel sharpens up really well. And they give you, like I said, thin blade stocks, thin hollow grinds. They give you G10 that feels a little bit better than this one as well. And yeah, I, I do, I don't know, maybe the CD also fails, but no, it does not. Like, um, you just see the tolerances are a little bit better on the, on the knife that's, that even costs, costs less. But a lot of these American manufacturers that try to make budget knives in China, which are not really budget because they sell them for really, uh, for really too much money. Spyderco Resilience comes to mind. The Spyderco Resilience Lightweight came out this year. The Resilience is a really good knife, but again, costs like 70 euros, 70, 70 to 80 euros. And the quality is just not what a 70 to 80 euro knife should be. It's more like a 40 to 50 euro knife. And all of these knives are made in China already, so why not buy a Chinese brand that at least have the, has the quality you know, that a knife should have? So yeah, a lot of these American manufacturers making knives in China have problems now. I think the prices are too high um, against the competitors and the quality is a little bit too low. And yeah, I, I think in this price range, me personally, I do like myself some cold steel because cold steel, you can get these Voyagers for like 75 euros. Um, they're on sale all the time. You can get them for less than the Strata here. You get the better heat treatment and better grinding and also a better edge out of box. And I think they will also last you a little bit longer. Now what you don't get with all of these knives is the design that you get with the Strata. And you know, if this is the main reason you want this knife, you can still buy it, buy it but you probably are not going to be happy with this. I don't really have a knife in my collection that's comparable to this design because like I said, this, this size range is really unique. Um, 4.5 inches of blade length is done super rarely and I wish it was done more often. The only knife that I can think of in my collection that's a little bit similar in terms of, you know, being slim and lightweight and still a nice clip point is the Broken Skull, which the Broken Skull is a little bit more expensive, but you know, also have a more inexpensive Broken Skull, which is, I, I think it's called the Range Boss, something like that. Um, you do get a better steel, better grinding, better heat treatment, also better edge out of box. The shape is obviously very different. You have more of a buoy, upswept style clip point, more Americanized. This one is a more subtle clip point. And I do like that the knife is, is slim here and then widens in the front. I think the blade design is really, really good. Kershaw just didn't, didn't make it all the way to the end. Like, they do this a lot of times, I have the feeling, they have a really cool idea, but then they just skip on the quality part. And this is why I don't like these American manufacturers doing stuff in China. I don't, I don't, I don't really like that. Like CRKT for instance, same shit. They do a lot of really good designs and then give them a really bad heat treatment and bad grinding. And Kershaw is no different. And not saying that they don't have any good knives. They have done some really thin geometries as well. They have some made in the USA stuff. But this one is not a good Kershaw. Um, I have to say, unfortunately. Now, with that being said, um, yeah, would you recommend this knife? Obviously I wouldn't, so yeah, buy the Broken Skull. It's made a lot to a lot higher standard and yeah. Like I said, the design is just so unique. Um, not really comparable to a lot of knives on the market because of its design, but, but yeah, that's it. Um, I wish this video was a little bit more positive because I really liked what the idea originally of this knife. I really did. But yeah, maybe we see each other in another video and hopefully I have a better video for you at that point, meaning a more positive video. And yes, 
I wish you guys a nice rest of your day. Goodbye, people.